Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving another locus problem. Remember yesterday we solved an equation with z and z bar and z i and 1. Today we're going to be doing this locus problem. Locus problems are fun. So basically what we're trying to do is find the set of points, find the set of z values that satisfy this type of equation. And of course, you can generalize this. You can say, hey, what is the locus for absolute value of z minus z sub 1 plus the absolute value of z minus z sub 2 equals some constant k. Later on, we're going to talk about these things and hopefully generalize them. But in this case, we're going to be looking at these particular values. And this is going to be a pretty interesting result. So I'm hoping that you'll be surprised if you are not familiar with this. So don't spoil the surprise and don't even say what this is going to look like if you already know it. All right, let's get started. So to be able to solve this problem, we're going to need to replace Z with something. And since this channel is called Z, this channel is called Z? No, this channel is called A plus BI. Let's go ahead and set Z equal to A plus BI. I know some people are going to set it equal to something else, but we got to stick with A plus BI. And then later on, we can go ahead and convert it if needed. No big deal. Okay, now let's go ahead and replace what is z minus 1? It's going to be a minus 1 plus bi. Notice that only the real part is going to change. And then when we subtract i, the imaginary part is going to change. So it's going to be a plus b minus 1i. So notice that they are different, right? Great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the absolute value of these two things. And then their sum is supposed to equal 2. Awesome. What is the absolute value of this one right here? It's going to be the square root of a minus 1 squared plus b squared. That's the first absolute value. The second absolute value, I'm looking at these two things, is going to be the square root of a squared plus b minus 1 squared, and the sum is supposed to equal 2. Now, at this point, it's kind of hard to guess what this is going to look like, right? Maybe. Maybe you do know it, but it's kind of hard to guess, so we're going to work it out. Get rid of all the radicals. We're going to do a lot of algebra. Not a lot, but a little bit of algebra, but this is good practice. So now I'm going to keep these as is for now until the very end. So let's go ahead and subtract this from both sides. Because before I square it, I kind of want to put the radicals in different sides. If I don't, then I'm going to have to deal with a product that's kind of gigantic and I don't want to do it. I don't know if it's going to give us the same answer at the end. Probably should, but it's going to be more work in my opinion. So I'm going to square both sides after... Uh, isolating one of the radicals and then this is as um, a difference for d um, difference squared so the first one is easy just get rid of the radical because these two things cancel out here it's not that easy we're gonna have to square a difference like uh, x minus y so it's gonna be 4 plus you know how I square differences and sums I first do the squares and then I do the 2ab or 2xy thing minus four times this square root thing. I still have to keep the radical because it's not squared, it's two x, y, okay? Awesome, so they're equal. Notice that when I expand it, I'm gonna get a squared plus b squared minus two a plus one, right? And then on the right hand side, I'm gonna get four plus a squared plus b squared minus two b plus one, and then minus four times this radical, a squared plus b minus 1 squared. And then notice that a squared plus b squared is going to cancel out, right? Isn't that cool? 1 is going to cancel out, super duper nice. And now we would like to put the radical on one side. Let's go ahead and bring the radical over to the left because it has a minus sign, which I don't like. That kind of bothers me. So let's go ahead and write it as 4 times the radical a squared plus b minus 1 squared equals, what do we have on the right hand side? We do have a 4, we do have a negative 2a coming in, so it's going to be 2a minus 2b, or not 2b. Yay, I was able to do that. And then, what else do I have? Uh, well, looks like I don't have anything else, right? Well, I have the 4, and the 1 cancelled out, and that's it. So I have the 4. Notice that we can divide both sides by 2. You don't have to do it, but I just like doing it because we're going to square both sides again, and I don't want numbers to get large because they're scary, right, when they're large. So a minus b plus 2. At this point, you should square both sides one more time, and then we'll get the answer. All right? So let's see how this goes. 
uh, we're going to get 4 times a squared plus b minus 1 squared equals this. Now, how do you square something like this? You could use the formula x plus y plus z squared, or you could treat this as a single term, like squared first. That's going to be a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. And then square the next term, which is 4, and then just multiply uh, their product and, I mean, multiply them and double the answer. Multiply their product. Okay, so weird. Now, we're going to go ahead and simplify everything. This is going to become a squared plus b squared minus 2b plus 1. I'm going to distribute to 4. 4a squared plus 4b squared minus 8b plus 4 equals some other stuff is going to cancel out, which is what, what's cool about it. a squared minus 2ab plus b squared plus 4 plus 4a minus 4b. Awesome. Take a look. A squared, B squared, they're not going to cancel out. If they did, then we would end up with something really weird, like probably something linear, maybe an equation or linear equation or some pair of equations. But they don't. So what can I do? Oh, 4 cancels out. That's great. And then we can kind of put these uh, on the left, everything on the left-hand side. How about that? 4A squared minus A squared, that's going to be 3A squared. And then I will have 3B squared. So these two are taken care of. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring in this, which is going to be plus 2AB. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring this 4A. I don't have any A on the left, so it's just going to be minus 4A. And then negative 4B, we're going to bring it at as plus 4B. Negative 8 plus 4 is negative 4B, and that's going to equal 0. Make sense? So we were able to get everything on the same side. Now we did get an equation like this. What is that supposed to mean? Well, first of all, let me do some conversions. First of all, I want to divide everything by 3 as if it's going to make things easier on us. And then I want to do the following. Remember, we replace z with a plus bi. But with locus problems, you're not supposed to do that. Why did I do it? Because the, this channel is called a plus bi, so I wanted to stick to it. But actually, x plus yi is better for locus problems. Let's go ahead and replace a with x and y with b. The other way around, I mean. So now we're going to get the following. x squared plus y squared plus 2 over 3xy. The conversion is fairly easy. 4 over 3x minus 4 over 3y equals 0. Do you think this is the equation of a circle? No. But this is definitely a conic, a conic section, but kind of like a weird one. And notice that we have an xy term. That's why it's kind of messed up a little bit. Okay, great. I'm going to show you the graph a little bit in a little bit, and then uh, we'll talk about what this shape is called, but not, not get into that much details. Anyways, so what is this called? Do you think this is a circle? or rectangle, or pair of lines, whatever. Make a guess, and then we're going to look at the results. Okay, great. If you said this is an ellipse, you write about it, because that's what it is called, ellipse. And this is what it looks like. Wow. Not only it's an ellipse, but it's kind of like rotated. So we got to talk about rotation of axes. Oh, no, that's, that's too much for this video. But maybe later we're going to talk about it. But here's some results. Uh, from the solution of this equation, you get some x and y values. Interesting, right? Some radicals. And then, here are some integer solutions, which you're going to see on the next graph, 0, 0, and 1, 1. And yes, here's the graph in Desmos. The other ones were, were from alpha. And as you can see, there's a very irrational point on this curve. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.